end of the year is here and we're continuing our end of the year list and in today's list instead of just doing like the top 10 hidden gems of this year i saw sean chandler did an interesting video and i'm actually going to take inspiration from him and do top five most surprising movies top five most disappointing movies and top five hidden gems for this year and i'm excited to dive into this guys so make sure to hit the like subscribe button comment down below your guys' thoughts do your guys' top fives down below in the comment section and without further ado we're going to dive into this and start with our top five biggest surprises of 2023 coming down first at my number five for top surprising is godzilla minus one. I didn't know what to expect from this. I've always enjoyed the Toho Godzilla movies and you know this movie looked awesome but it just looked like another Godzilla movie but I, what was most surprising about this movie is the fact that when you watch it I wasn't anticipating going into this one that this being one of my favorite films of the year but two that the film would actually make me more intrigued with the human and all their dynamics and personalities Compared to Godzilla himself, usually when I go to a Godzilla movie, I just want to see Godzilla killing, chomping, eating everyone, and in here, I didn't. I was so intrigued with the human story. Just something that none of us would ever say over like the last 10 years when it comes down to the MonsterVerse movies made at Legendary, which are enjoyable for what they are, but the human characters are a mess, and... I really ended up loving Godzilla Minus One. I still contend that it is the best Godzilla movie yet, and I was not expecting to see that in 2023. We get into my number four, which is Thanksgiving. Now, I know this might be hit or miss for some people, but it's most surprising for me because I'm not a huge fan of Eli Roth, nor am I a big fan of just the trailer and the concept itself. It looked cheesy, it looked schlocky, it looked stupid, it looked like it was parroting off other movies, and Thanksgiving ended up being a delightful surprise that I will actually be watching almost every every Thanksgiving once it's released on Blu-ray and that is a big surprise for me I expected to go into this think it was going to be the worst film of the year and it ended up not being that it ended up being an enjoyable movie that I still kind of think about here and there might be predictable but it's an absolute blast and again you might have hated this movie but I thought I was going to I went in with like very low expectations and I was completely surprised and to my number three another movie that many people have been talking about that they hated and I expected to kind of feel the same way and that is leave the world behind this is a brand new Netflix movie that feels like the way that when I talk with people to either they despise the movie they enjoyed the movie but despise the ending or they absolutely utterly loved it and I'm one of those people that loves the idea loves what the director tried doing I didn't fully love the movie though but I was surprised the fact that when I watched the ending I was like oh that's actually like really clever in the way that it's kind of like a meta commentary on our world and specifically how to meta commentary towards like even using the show friends for instance and how that is all used about leave the world behind was just kind of again I'm not a big fan of a lot of Netflix movies they usually end up just disappointing me and making me roll my eyes their series are great and Leave the World Behind had all these talented actors and, and a talented director and a talented writer, and it ended up looking on the surface of that's what it was going to be. And while it's not perfect, it's a movie that I still kind of think about, and I still, like, when someone asks me about the movie, I'm like, I think you should give it a shot. It, it might not be for you, but just to kind of expect that. Oh, my number two is The Flash. Now, a lot of this is surprising to me because I thought I was not going to like or just think these movies were good at all. And I know a lot of you guys think The Flash is awful. I, I've heard about it in my comments section. I, I completely disagree with you. I, I knew a lot going into The Flash story-wise. Um, the VFX were probably going to be an issue. And the other thing I heard about The Flash was it just wasn't that great. Like speaking with certain people working on the movie. And then I actually saw the movie. After, you know, people were saying this is actually one of the best comic book movies ever made. I, I don't agree with that. But I found The Flash to be awesome. It reminded me of watching one of the original Tim Burton Batman movies, and not just because Michael Keaton is in the movie, but mostly because of the feeling it had. It felt like Tim Burton would have made this type of film, this type of Flash movie, and I think Andy Muschietti did a really good job directing this. The, bar none, there's nothing like that I can like spare when it comes down to the visual effects. I still think that's a mess. I still think a couple of the story plots are an absolute mess. But in, in the end of the day, this multiverse story that they decided to tell with the Flash, and this being their version of Flashpoint, really shocked me due to the performance from Ezra Miller, due to the great performance from Michael Keaton, Sasha Kaye is great, but it also surprised me with how emotional the story actually got. This is one of those team-up movies that I expected to kind of just be fine, 
and enjoyable for what it was but it ended up being a big surprise because i'm watching it and i'm actually getting choked up by the very end with the mother sequence and for me that is why the flash deserves its spot in the top five most surprising i thought this would be one of the worst comic book films of all time some people might think that I do not. Number one most surprising movie of 2023 is Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. Now, when this was announced and they said that the Game Night director is going to be doing this, I wasn't looking forward to it. I'm like, it's probably going to be good, but I, I just, I don't know. I don't know anything really about Dungeons and Dragons. And the fact that this has kind of been one of my comfort movies of 2023 just excited me because... The, what they do with Game Night was kind of the same flair here, but in a fantasy realm world. And I think the pairing of Chris Pine and Michelle Rodriguez and Sophia Lillis and everyone else into the mix really brought to life this world of Dungeons and Dragons. I think they did a good job because afterwards I became absolutely obsessed with like looking up all the little nuances and talking to other people who do play Dungeons and Dragons and seeing how they were able to bring this movie to life and how they were able to add little nuances that make it feel like you're actually playing the game, but you're not. You're just watching a movie in this world. It, it all became great because the movie makes you care about the characters, but it is downright absolutely hilarious. Uh, specifically with just like the opening scene of them escaping from the prison and pushing the bird guy out the window. That, that was absolutely hilarious. And there's moments like that throughout this entire film that just really surprised me. And again, it's become one of my comfort movies of 2023. With my top five surprises out of the way, let's jump into my top five biggest disappointments of 2023. And at my number five, this is a movie that I like, and maybe I'm just being weird, but I was still disappointed in it because I thought it was going to be one of my favorite films of this year, and that is Evil Dead Rise. Now, some of you might be like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm a massive Evil Dead fan, and I think overall they got the nuance down of what the Evil Dead is, specifically in its core, its humor, and in general, its livelihood. But one of my biggest complaints with the Evil Dead Rise is the fact that it just really didn't hit the nuance with what I wanted it to be. And I think that more just chalks it up to expectations. I was expecting more of a blend of the remake of Evil Dead mixed alongside with what Sam Raimi developed. And I didn't get that. And again, that's full expectations. I just really expected a lot more from the Evil Dead Rise and it ended up being my least favorite in this entire franchise. The entire third act is awesome though. I will not deny that. I absolutely love the third act of this. But the first two, I thought were just fine. And I haven't really thought too much about The Evil Dead Rise. I do plan on re-watching it soon to see if my opinion changes now knowing what the film is. But I haven't had any eagerness to go back. Out my number four is Transformers Rise of the Beast. Another movie that I thought was enjoyable for what it was. But again, I've not thought too much about it. And I think it leaves a disappointment for me because Bumblebee, I thought, was one, if not the best Transformers movie yet. And there's a lot of expectations and surprises on that. And while Michael Bay's Transformers films were very divisive and not for everyone, and I certainly enjoyed most of them for what they are, the Bumblebee reboot for this franchise was exactly what we needed. And coming into Rise of the Beast, this is, I think, a semi-sequel to it. But they really kind of just tried to do what Michael Bay did. And that's not what I wanted. That's, that's not exactly. I wanted them to come off the Bumblebee, make Bumblebee the main character again, and go forward and... I, I, I don't know. I, I truly don't know what they were trying to do with Rise of the Beast. I think there's a lot of cool things. Also, not enough of the Beast. Like, personally, I didn't I didn't think we got enough of them. The action is stellar. I like the Transformers views and how they look. But I expected a lot more from this movie overall. Get into my number three, and this is actually just... I just think this is a bad movie, and that's Napoleon. Uh, Ridley Scott is always very hit or miss for me. In the year when he came out with The Last Duel and House of Gucci, there was a 50-50 shot of both of those movies being ass. But most likely I knew... When I saw Last Duel and I thought, this is one of the best Ridley Scott movies, I instantly knew House of Gucci was probably going to be shit. And going into Napoleon, I kind of had that same gut feeling of when I had seen House of Gucci. And Napoleon is not a good movie. It has not settled well with me. It's not one that I would even recommend to a history buff or anyone out there. I think there's decent ideas in there. And specifically, it seems like Ridley Scott really had an idea of who Napoleon Bonaparte was. I think Joaquin Phoenix is decent in the role. He's one of the best actors working today. I think some could argue he is the best actor working today some days i might even argue that but this is one of his more weaker performances and alongside that vanessa kirby is really the only one giving it her all in fact the only thing that i think really holds this film tight is that relationship which 
I'm saying it's tight because it's the only entertaining part about the damn movie. Uh, it was an absolute parody, and I think that's one of my biggest problems with the movie is the fact that I just felt like they didn't know what tone they wanted to go with. Sometimes it feels like they're making fun of Napoleon, and then at other times they're showing these war sequences, which are absolutely extravagant and amazing, and I will never shit on those. Those were filmed incredibly well, but everything else... Not my cup of tea. Then we get into my number two, which is Asteroid City. Yes, I'm a huge Wes Anderson fan, and I actually think this is his worst movie yet. Maybe his second worst. I need to see it again. But I've had no eagerness, the same thing as I had with Evil Dead Rise. And maybe I just don't understand the movie. But, like, I've sat and, like, analyzed and watched videos on this. And it just, like, everything that Wes Anderson wanted to do in here just kind of, again, felt like a parody of what he's done in the past. And I think, for me, one of the biggest disappointments of this is... When you get into the movie and you see the first 20 minutes where it's just really centering in on Jason Schwartman and his family. And I was like, wow, I'm really into this. He's actually focusing in on a family. That's all he's doing. I love this. Let's continue this. And then boom, character, 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 sequence, 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 sequence. And uh, a play within a play and a play within this play and all the, 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 the it, 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 it lost me. It lost me and it pissed me off. Uh, to the point where I was actually frustrated watching the movie. And that's saying a lot because I usually love Wes Anderson and I did not love him here. And number one biggest disappointment of 2023 is Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. And this might not be my least favorite film because I, I definitely saw worse films this year, but 99% of the films that I saw that were in my top 10 worst, you can find on Letterboxd, but I knew those were going to be ass. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania is just disappointing for a lot of reasons. First off, I love the first two Ant-Man movies, specifically the first one. It was just so enjoyable. I love the heist feel to it. Second, you're bringing in Kang. I love this villain from the comics, and I thought it was a lackluster introduction. Now, I think the performance was decent, that's for sure, but the problem with Kang itself is there's this was supposed to be the introduction to him, to him scaring the entire MCU and then for us to see what's going on. Because most people had not watched Loki. This was their first introduction, and their first introduction is someone d killed by ants. And, uh, well, not killed by ants, but defeated by ants. And even Ant-Man. And not going anything against them, but that's a disappointment. And I've always said that, okay, fine, you want to do that? Then cool, but... That final ending, whether at Cassie's birthday and Scott Lang's trying to like have this, oh, like who was, oh, it doesn't matter. That that just felt like a slap in the face for like as me as a Marvel fan. And what I personally think they should have done is one of two things. Either way, if he defeated by the ants or the other Kang variants that we saw at the end credit scenes, kill that Kang and then basically tell Scott, like, we're going to let you free. You disappointed us. We thought you would be able to defeat them will come to your world eventually and then they just leave or some shit like that i'm not a writer but so then he goes back and no matter what even if that did it or they defeated him he feels this eagerness that he needs to tell someone well who is uh captain america now the, the guy who was in the first ant-man movie so he hits up the old falcon captain america now and says hey this guy's coming who's the avengers all this stuff and that could have been the post credit scene or that could have been the ending and then that leaves us with that dire situation that kang will return nope Nope, didn't do that. Uh, on top of that, I also just think the film was a mess in its editing and also its story-wise. Uh, so I was disappointed for quite a few reasons. I was disappointed that I couldn't have just a fun-filled story. I was disappointed that I didn't get the Kang introduction that I actually felt like I should have earned. And overall, I just thought Amen on the Lost Quantumania was a big disappointment. And it's I've said this, it's the only MCU film I've not bought first day. And I still don't own it. It's not on my Blu-ray shelf that's sitting behind the camera. Now let's close out on a positivity for this video. And at my number five, we're talking about the five best hidden gems of 2023. And at my number five is Nimona. This is a awesome animated film on Netflix. Again, we're talking about another Netflix movie, which is surprising. And the reason it's a hidden gem is it's just not garnering any buzz for award season. And I feel like that's a big disappointment. I feel like this is a film that many people should be talking about this year, and they're not. There's so much lovable and enjoyableness to this that I think kids could enjoy. I think the animation is stellar. In fact, this is the film that Disney originally canceled at Blue Sky Studios, and then Netflix saved it, and they bring in excellent voice actors, and it's about a shapeshifter who's just not accepted by society. I love the world that they built up, and I, I love Nimona. 
I thought this was so underrated, and it's absolutely one of those hidden gems that kind of came and went, and everyone forgot to talk about it, and now it's award season, and there's barely any talk about it. So definitely go watch it on Netflix. Number four is Rye Lane. Now this came out, or I think I saw it around January, and that it came out on Hulu around March. And this film deserves the world. This directorial debut is absolutely incredible, but it's about two unlikely people meeting up and just walking around talking for the day. One's kind of going through a breakup, one has their own situation going on, and in a way, it's a romantic comedy in British humor-wise, and... Rye Lane was something that delighted me to no end. It was one of my favorite films. Actually, it was my favorite film for about the first few months of the year. And it continued to just kind of be one of those things that pops up in my head. That anyone was like, throw me something that's like romantic and it's humorous and it's enjoyable. Not a lot of people talking about it. I would say Rye Lane. Uh, all the way. Uh, it's Sundance premiere was excellent, and I'm really impressed with this movie. I just wish more people talked about it. Get into my number three, which is Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. This is served more in the box office and more just in the general public audience talking about this movie. First off, Abby Ryder Forrester is absolutely staggering in this. Probably the best child performance of the entire year, alongside Rachel McAdams, who I do think should be nominated for Best Supporting Actress for her role in this. This movie is just such a delight. Yes, I've never read the book, but it brings brings such a nuance that I think if you've read the book, you're going to love it. If you haven't read the book, you're probably still going to love it. This just is one of those perfect little delightful films that put a big smile on my face. We get into my number two, which is Flora and Son. Now, this is a hidden gem because it came on Apple and no one talked about it after the week it was released. And Flora and Son is created by the guy, John Carney, who made Sing Street, which was one of the best films when that came out like four or five years ago. And Flora and Son, when I actually watch this movie, one of the things that really surprised me with is when I'm watching this, I, I see the main character and I'm like, oh, this is like, she's kind of a bitch. I don't know if I'm going to like her. And then like instantly in like the next 10 minutes after that, you fall in love with her and you fall in love with what she's trying to do. And music is a big piece of this, of how music can bring people together. And I've always liked how John is able to do that as a director and seamlessly put music throughout his stories, his romantic comedies, his comedies, his music musical odysseys i guess and florence son kind of creates and does the same thing once again and again it was something that i was very pleasantly surprised by but my number one biggest hidden gem of the year is the funniest movie i've seen this year and that is joyride now comedy is completely subjective you might have thought this movie was unbearable to watch and that's okay i did not it's a hidden gem because i not a lot of people talked about it uh, it did not do good at the box office, and I'm hoping that it does find life on streaming one day once it does. Or go buy it on Blu-ray and enjoy it yourself. Four girls go to China, and that's about it, and it becomes pretty much their version of The Hangover, even though it has a very much more emotional core to it. But what surprised me so much with the humor in here is that each joke and each gag, some the big ones at least, are not pop culture references. But as well as it feels like something like Seth Rogen would have made like five, six, seven years ago, and they take a joke, they land that joke, you're laughing your ass off, but there's always this subtle little thing left over from that joke that ties into the next joke. Then that little thing ties into the next joke. And it consistently becomes this gag, but it's always setting up the next thing. And what's so surprising about that is sometimes they'll do these ongoing running gag jokes throughout and it kind of gets a little bit sour, but the way that, you know, the first joke ever, like once they're on their trip, ties into something all the way back at point A, which you completely forgot about, is hilarious how this goes back to this point. And it's very clever in the way that it's written, but as well as it has its emotional core, which makes you care about the four girls. And I absolutely loved joyride it is one of my favorite comedies of this year the experience of watching that in the theater was absolutely hilarious and i wouldn't I, I wish i could see this again for the very first time because it was such a big hidden thing that i would think deserved a lot better at the box office but with that said guys that is my top five most surprising top five most disappointing and top five biggest hidden gems of this year please let me know down below what your guys' thoughts were so much again guys for watching this though and of course until next time stay classy